Hey guys, welcome back to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel. And in this episode, I want to go through some of my female ball python breeders. And if you watched my very last episode, I gave you some of the top 10 suggested equipment for working in, in a snake room like this or working with snakes. If you have a ball python, you should go back and check out that video. I have all the essential equipment that you really need to take care of a snake. And I'm actually going to put that same list in the description of this video, underneath the video, in the description box. And I'm also going to add the description and the link for the ultrasound that I'm using. And typically what you do with an ultrasound is, is you actually look inside of the snake at the developing eggs, and we call those developing eggs follicles. And if you know anything about ultrasounds, they typically can run from in a range from probably $5,000 to maybe $10,000 for an ultrasound. And I actually have this ultrasound that I bought from China. It's a really nice ultrasound. I've been using it for a few years. And they're only, I'd say, about $1,200 shipped to your door. I'm, I'm going to put that link down in the description. And last time I did an ultrasound video, everyone was asking, where can I buy one of these ultrasounds? And let me show you that ultrasound. And today we're going to check out some of these female ball pythons. Okay, so here is the ultrasound machine that I bought on eBay straight from China and I put a laptop next to it so you can kind of see the difference between that and a normal size laptop. It's definitely a little bit smaller and it comes with this fancy bag with uh, little pockets to actually house it and, you, and actually folds up, fits on the right side and then on the left side you put all the cords and everything. And the one thing you really want to make sure that you get is the right probe. So the link that I have is actually a link to the, the ultrasound with a linear probe and you definitely Definitely need a probe that's flat on the top and a lot of them that there's some on there that are cheaper and they have a round probe and that definitely won't work for ball pythons you have to make sure you have the right probe and then the other thing you need is some ultrasound um, transmission gel and this is what I use spectra 360 electro gel and I'll go ahead and put a link of that uh, I think you can get it on Amazon I'll look around and see if I can find a link and I'll post that down in the comments too but without the gel it really won't work and what you need to do is put a, a pretty heavy bead of gel right on the edge and then it goes between this and the snake and the gel is kind of the barrier that actually allows this probe to see into the snake and it's it's pretty easy to use I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of my ball python females out and then we'll take an ultrasound and take a look at her follicles okay so I'm gonna try this to where you can see both the snake and the ultrasound you can see the screen right here and if we see some follicles they'll show up in the middle and as you can see it doesn't really work if you don't have any gel on it and then as soon as you put gel on the probe you can see the screen change right there and what we really need to do is come up about a third of the way from the tail and <laughs> the hard part is if they start running then you're kind of uh, chasing the snake let's see if I can let's see if I can <laughs> do this here with the snake not running so let's see here those are the follicles and then I hit the freeze button right here you can see right there she's got quite a few oh she's starting to run you can see them pretty good there <laughs> Woo. So then what I like to do is I like to just kind of, this is a water soluble gel. I just like to wipe off the snake when I'm done and then you can take follow it with a wet rag or wet paper towel and kind of wipe off the extra gel. Okay, so here is the screen on the ultrasound machine and it has a little cursor and kind of a little wheel right in the middle of the keyboard that you can move around. And what you need to do is come down to where it says general right here and you hit the set button which is <laughs> which is kinda hard to figure out if you don't know exactly what to hit so set is kinda like enter and then you come up to uh, where it says distance second one up distance and then you can actually measure the distance so from here you put your cursor right on the top of the follicle and hit set again 
Then you put it on the bottom of the follicle, and that measures the top to the bottom, which is 17.3 millimeters. And then you measure from left to right. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky. You kind of have to guess based on the on the shape of the follicle. The second one is 19.8 for an average of 18.6 millimeters. And typically you start breeding about 10 millimeters and they keep growing bigger and bigger. As a matter of fact, they'll actually get bigger than the whole screen and about 45 millimeters they'll ovulate and then about 50 millimeters they'll actually lay eggs. Okay, so this is my pastel spider desert ghost female. I'm really excited about her. I'm hoping she'll actually lay some eggs. And so for the next one, I basically just wipe off the probe, put a little more gel on the probe. I pretty put a pretty good bead on there. And then I hit the freeze button to unfreeze it. And then we'll take a look and see what kind of follicles we have for this girl probably right about here and sometimes it's kinda ooh yeah she's got some nice ones right there sometimes it's kinda hard to get it just right and sometimes it's kinda tricky because she'll have some small ones she's, so, so, she's got some small ones over here they get a little bit bigger over here. Those are some nice big ones. And then I'll hit the freeze button. And sometimes you got to get the focus just right, too. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky to get the, the right view and then freeze it. Those are definitely eggs right in there. So another thing you'll notice is when I actually do this, I actually leave the snake right in the tub and I don't take the snake out. And the, the thing is, is when I first did it, the very first year, I actually took the snake out, put it on the table and tried to do an ultrasound. And let me tell you, those snakes, it seemed like every time the snake would take off across the table and it was almost impossible to hold the snake hold the probe, and then hit the freeze button. So I actually, a couple years ago, I actually started pulling the whole tub, and the snakes are pretty inactive if you pull the whole tub, especially in breeding season, and it's really easy to do an ultrasound. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and measure this for my pastel spider desert ghost female. And the last time I measured her, uh, I'm not sure exactly when it was, but she came in at 12.9. I actually forgot to write the date down, so I'm not sure exactly when it was. It was basically at the beginning of the breeding season, so it's been a couple months, I think, since I actually measured these. And she is coming in at average of 19.4. And it seems like once they hit about 20 millimeters, they all go off of food. These last two snakes have been off of food for, I'd say, probably a few weeks now. So I am extremely interested in what is going on with this clown female. I'm actually pairing her with my albino pied male, hoping for the triple hats. And hopefully she will give me some eggs this year. She's looking pretty good. And essentially what you do is you go right along the spine and kind of feel around right by the spine there. Let's see, I'm definitely, uh, I see some small ones there, hmm, those are pretty small. Hmm, oh, let's see. See if I can catch these. It's always good to have your finger on the freeze button in case you get that, that picture that you want. And then she's kind of at a weird angle. And then sometimes it just doesn't come out very good. Let's see. Right there. Perfect. Those aren't very big at all. She's got a long way to go. I don't know 
if she's actually going to make it this year. All right, so these is definitely show up a lot better. It's interesting that on some snakes, it definitely shows up better than other snakes. And some of them, I think it depends on how big the snake is. It seems like for the smaller snakes sometimes, you can have more defined follicles. And the bigger ones, I don't know if it's because of more body mass in between. This one's coming in at 12.0 millimeters. Alright, so I want to show you the follicles on this big female. And I actually did it a little bit off camera here. And she is really tough. It's really hard to tell her follicles. She's got some really big ones though that almost fill the whole screen. And she's probably, I'd say she weighs probably close to 5,000 grams. She's a really big snake. So I'm just going to show you real quick. If I can, if I can actually capture one of these follicles, but this is it right here. All, it almost goes all the way across, and you can see the end between the two eggs. They're all their their follicles now. <laughs> once they get, once they're laid, there actually will be eggs, but they go all the way across the whole screen. It's it's almost off the screen. This girl is definitely going to be the next one to lay. So really, what you need to do when a snake gets the follicles this big, you really need to start. Uh, checking on them every day to make sure you catch the eggs right when they lay them because you definitely don't want the eggs in there too long without actually taking them away from the female and probably now that I have really big follicles like this it's really a good time to actually set up my incubator and get all the temperatures dialed in and get that all set up so she is actually <laughs> it's actually 32.5 by 39.6 and this is actually all the way off the screen, the, the length. So I'm thinking she's probably at probably close to be, being able to lay some eggs. So uh, I, that, this is, I'd say this is by far the, the female that's furthest along out of all my snakes. And I definitely need to keep an eye on her and get my incubator all set up. So if you guys are wondering what my incubator looks like, this is it. It is six feet tall, and actually last year at one point, I had egg boxes on every single shelf, and I thought I was going to run out of room, and they were actually hatching as fast as I could fill it. And it's, I couldn't believe how many hatchlings. I think I hatched out over 100 snakes in this incubator, and it's really nice. It was a brand new beverage cooler that I got from a guy on Craigslist. And the, the heap on it, and the compressor was out on it, and actually I went through and unplugged the fan and the, and everything underneath. I, I unplugged everything except the lights, and then I put in my own heat strips. And I originally put heat strips just on the back, and then I had this custom made over here on the sides from uh, um, Reptile Basics. And, and what they do is they actually can cut them to any size and then they can actually put um, these little cords and it just plugs right in to your thermostat right here and I actually took my thermostat off and I was using it for my display case at the reptile show so actually I need to get another thermostat for my incubator because uh, the one I'm using now is actually the one that runs the heat on my displays at the reptile show but this thing has been a really fantastic incubator and <laughs> it still smells nice and fresh and clean inside. Okay so that is the update on my ball python breeding season. I didn't actually go through all my females. I'm actually pairing up 15 snakes this year and last year I actually had 23 females that I paired up. It was pretty incredible and I had over 100 hatchlings so I'll probably have fewer ball python hatchlings this year. But keep in mind, Lucy, my reticulated python, if she lays eggs, she could have a clutch of 35 or 40 since she is, she probably weighs 60 pounds, so she can have an incredible amount of hatchlings. She's a reticulated python, and if she lays, I'll definitely have a lot of reticulated python hatchlings for sale. And it was pretty interesting going through all my snakes and kind of seeing where I'm at and you definitely I would highly recommend getting an ultrasound machine because looking at a snake you really can't tell how far along that snake is without actually looking at the follicular development with an ultrasound and, and in this case it allows me to know that you know my my most developed follicles in my biggest snake you know they're on the way I would say 
she'll probably lay eggs in the next week or two. So now I know that I need to get my incubator set up and keep checking her on a daily basis and get everything ready for the egg laying season. Okay, so that wraps up my discussion of the update on my ball python female breeders. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.